Hello and welcome to Ecolix. In this video, we will discuss about Hackshare Olin theory and its diagram. So mainly if you haven't seen the previous lecture where I explained the theory and theoretical portion of Hackshare Olin model. So make sure that you have, you have seen that video. The link is in the description before watching this. So coming on to this topic, Hackshare Olin model, I have explained the theory earlier in the small video. Now we'll see the diagram and we'll try to understand how countries engage in trade. As I told you earlier, there are certain assumptions and the for any examination, if you are writing, assumptions are the most important part. So there are certain assumptions like two into two into two model, like two countries, two products, two factors of production and etc. So you can see in the books and the textbook, but here we will discuss the diagram very carefully. So let's begin. This is HO model, means Heckscher Olin model. Now, if you see the timeline, so Heckscher Olin, Heckscher given this model in the year 1919, and Olin. His, his student made some improvements in the year 1933. So these are the two important factual information. It is important for you. Now, if you see this, the Heckscher Olin model, if you make a timeline, so if we start the timeline like this, so this is also known as modern theory of international trade. So if suppose international trade starts with mercantilism, Then Adam Smith gave his absolute advantage theory. Okay, absolute advantage. Then David Ricardo gave his comparative cost advantage. Comparative advantage or comparative cost advantage theory, which is still in the modern times, still unchallenged. Then after that, Heberler, Gottfried Heveler has given the opportunity cost theory. Opportunity cost theory. And after that, we can say this is the HO model. And in the coming videos, we'll continue this series from HO model till like Samuels and Ripchinsky, etc. So, till this point, if you see, this is the 16th or 17th century. Adam Smith is around 1776 where he wrote the book. This is like 1870. Heberler is also in the 18th, 19th century. And Heckscher Olin, I told you, is 20th century, 1919 and 1933. So this is a timeline if you understand. Now, if you compare, this is generally considered as the classical theory. Although classical theory also provides the addition of this because Heberler's opportunity cost theory was based on these two earlier model given by Adam Smith and Ricardo respectively. But Axel Olin made a significant improvement in the theory. What he or what they provided is the difference in the total ideology. So you can say that's why it is called as the modern theory. Now if we move forward, we try to understand why it is called modern. So it means the difference from the Heckscher Olin to the other theories, what they have done extra. What I can tell you why they have called as modern theory, because they have taken two factors. So two factors. So generally before Heckscher Olin, it was two into two into one model, which means two factors, two countries and two commodities. But here Heckscher Olin added. So it was not based on labor theory of value. So Heckscher Olin model, not only based on only labor theory, what Ricardo said that how much labor you're putting into it, it will decide the price of the commodity. But it is not just the labor only what Heckscher Olin said. So that's a major improvement. What he said that, that any country which is, is engaging in the, in the trade, the trade will be based on factor endowment. That trade would be based on factor endowment. What does it mean? It means if suppose a country is expert in making wheat or producing wheat and another country is expert in producing cloth, then they will produce in surplus and exchange. It's a basic simple uh, thing. Now if you see, suppose for example, India and United States of America. Okay, 
Suppose India is export in wheat and USA is export in cloth. It's a very simple example that we take. Now here you can say wheat, which is we can say a labor intensive commodity and cloth, we can say it's a capital intensive commodity. Okay. Now what Heckscher Olin said that before Heckscher Olin, it was only labor. Now this is the biggest improvement Heckscher Olin provided. That's why it is called a modern theory. So you can say two countries, two commodities, two factors. That is why this model makes the assumption of 2 into 2 into 2. I hope you understand it's very simple. Now if you try to see that there are assumptions, suppose for example, uh, this is our country India, this is United States of America. So there are certain assumptions that the labor is considered as the homogeneous within the country but not with the other country. So labor of India will have the same productivity, but the labor of India and the labor of US would be different. On the same lines, labor is mobile in India. It means labor can move from one place to another, Delhi to Mumbai, to Chennai, to Kolkata, but labor cannot travel internationally. So labor is immobile internationally. So these are the few assumptions which you can read from the book or any text and other uh, PDFs are also available on Ecoholics app. Apart from this, if you see the major thing that countries are engaging in trade, there is a very important cost known as transportation cost. Okay, transportation cost is means taking one good to the other country. So if India is selling wheat to USA and USA is selling uh, cloth to India, there must be some transportation cost, but Heckscher Olin ruled out that. So the assumption is there wouldn't be any transportation cost. Next is about the technology. So technology is considered as the constant. Constant technology they have assumed. It means technology will remain same where we are analyzing it. So it means in the part of analysis, the technology will not improve because if technology will improve, everything changes because technology changes efficiency of the labor. Okay. So now we'll come on to the diagram and we'll try to understand this. Okay. Diagram is very important. You see, there are basic microeconomics and macroeconomics tool that we'll be using. So suppose we are making this diagram with respect to India. And here if you can see this is cloth and this is wheat. Now in the comment section, just to pause it. In the comment section, let me know that if we will make a PPC curve or production possibility frontier, whatever you say, PPC or PPF. Now the bulge will be from which side? Now, as I told you earlier that India is having comparative advantage in terms of wheat production. So your PPC will look like this. Okay, so this is the bulge. It means more of wheat, less of cloth. Okay, so India is expert in wheat. Now suppose this is the point where India is currently producing. So I can say point number A. What we will do is We'll make an indifference curve if you remember. CIC, this is what we call community indifference curve. Community indifference curve is simple. All the indifference curve properties will remain same. Why community? Because this indif in indifference curve will show the consumption of whole India. It's not just for the individual. Like indifference curve for me, it would be different from you. But CIC of India will remain same for each and every consumer. Okay, so this is CIC that we will make. So we'll change the color so that you can understand. Okay. This is the indifference curve. And we will make a tangent as well. So there's a red line. will be a tangent. I hope it is visible. Okay. So I'll write here PA. 
okay p is the line and this is we can say indifference curve number one cic one this is india now point number a is the point where india is at the place of autarky what is the meaning of autarky autarky means closed economy so autarky is at point a okay now as india knows that we have to expertise in wheat in order to engage in trade with united states of america as i told you earlier us is expert in cloth so india is expert in wheat us is expert in cloth so what india will do india will shift its production and that production will shift from point number a to some other point and what will be that point it means india will now produce more of wheat so this india will move in the rightward direction so let's see let's uh, assume that if we take a green color and suppose india move to this point which is i can say point number b okay on the same lines we will draw a tangent as well and uh, we can say with the green color only so that you understand the difference okay so this is the b point i'll take that color now here this is the new point and i'll make the community indifference curve this is indifference curve number 2 okay so if i ask you a very simple question that now india is moving its production so its production from a to p point now this is the point i can say it's maybe we can say e point okay because c we have used so a b and e point there are three points now tell me that india as soon as engage in trade so trade goes up india will move from a to b in production okay this is the production so here i'll write p or production and india will move in consumption from a to e point so a to e point india will move in consumption okay this is production this is consumption my handwriting is bad so beg your pardon for this i hope you can see this so production now can you tell me why production cannot go beyond this black ppc line answer is very simple and uh, you can pause the video and write it in the comment section why india cannot produce beyond this black ppc the answer is simple but can india consume at point e previously at autarky means when india was a closed economy and there was no trade india was producing and consuming at point a only but as soon as it engages trade engages in trade with united states of america india expertise in in terms of wheat that is the horizontal axis and moves from point a to point b okay but in the consumption india moves from point a to point e why this has happened can we consume beyond ppc the answer is yes and which indifference curve is better one or two which indifference curve is better so i can say that indifference curve 2 is better than one because this is the simplest property of indifference curve as you go higher you will be better off so on the same lines india can consume e point with the help of imports okay just because of imports we can consume beyond this so this is this has happened only just because of india engages in trade okay so i hope you understand this diagram if you still have any doubt anything in mind you can mention in the comment section or the numbers given in below uh, in the description as well apart from this the second video from the us perspective where us is trying to expertise in cloth we'll see in the next video so make sure you subscribe to ecolix so that you get the notification of the next video and if you like this video give a big thumbs up share with your friends and try to learn it apart from this we are providing live classes for various competitive examination related to economics 
if you are interested you can attend the free counseling session answer writing sessions as well as many other session which will guide you or mentor you so that is you can book your appointment in the numbers given in the screen as well as in the description i hope you find it useful thank you and have a nice day